This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Audit Pro from ACI Learning modernizes the way your team learns. Earn NASBA-approved CPE credits through engaging training curriculum led by highly respected industry experts. With more than a 90% completion rate, Audit Pro courses are proven to be the most effective and efficient way to earn your CPE credits. Learn more at go.acilearning.com slash twit. You know, when, when, when people, you, you, you mentioned it earlier, Jeff, about Star Trek and, and like, you know, we, we're not there and, and why, why aren't we there? And that's the question that we get a lot is like when it comes to like interstellar travels, like, why aren't we out there? It was 60 years. We've been flying people in space, you know, and, and we've, we've barely gotten as far as the moon. And, uh, and so, you know, why, why don't we have a warp drive yet? Is that what you're building in your lab then when you're designing no, things out there? <laughs> I'm, I'm working strictly on slower than light stuff at the present time. Um, I mean, just to put it in perspective, the, the, if you total up all the academic institutions and all the nonprofits and all the channels of NASA or ESA funding, um, there's probably 10 million with an M dollars a year of research activity going on worldwide on advanced space propulsion beyond chemical rockets. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's peanuts. Uh, Is it? But is, is it just because it's easy? Like you mentioned earlier, like the, the, the shift between, uh, well, Delta Clipper, right? The, the, here was a rocket. It did, it did its test. That was it. And then for like decades, no one did anything, you know, with that. We just had the conventional uh, launch and throw away until now we see, you know, SpaceX and, and others are, are really pursuing it seriously because they've shown that it can be done. Is that like a case study? I think in some sense it is part of, you know, before, before people will fund an effort, they have to have some reason to think it's a thing that they can do. And, you know, so the, the value of the advanced work that I and others are doing on advanced space propulsion right now is to expand the intellectual limits of, of people understanding what might we actually be able to do. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think you're going to see a major uptick in funding because after all, it's hard to make money from sending a probe to another star. Um, so if it's going to be done, it's going to be done on a public good basis. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's going to be hard, but I, hard for people to get a lot of funding there. Although one can say, you know, there is, a tr there is spillover between advanced space propulsion for any purpose and any other purpose. You know, the, the ideas you come up with for going interstellar flight, um, any of them that are any good enhance your ability to maneuver around the solar system as well. And there might be customers for that. Um, but, you know, getting into the whole, you know, people, people on the street really uh, overestimate the amount of support there is for advanced uh, research really in almost any field. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, there's a few high profile fields where for historical or political reasons, there's a lot of money poured into them, but you know, in, in most research is done by people because they're interested in the answer. Uh, not, not so much because there's all these people throwing money at them to find the answer. So, so, so you mentioned then for, for interstellar travel, you're, you're focusing on, on slower than light. So what are like the, I guess your major go-tos right now, what could we use? Uh, that we're okay. looking at actively to, to reach another star. I mean, I guess conventional fuel, but you would need something the size of like, I don't know, like a, like Earth. a football stadium, <laughs> a stand oh. planet to get there. Okay. Uh, well, this so was what? not, this was, this was not the topic I thought we were going to discuss today, but, but I'm happy to do it. But oh, sorry. Rod, I'm sorry. I'm, right? I'm just, no, 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 I'm no, enthralled it's, by I, it. So. I, I could, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can have me back another time. Uh, the, um, you know, that what I, uh, in very briefly, what I recommend is if you're interested in the subject or your viewers are interested in the subject, if you look at the last few years of the conference, the Interstellar Research Group or Tennessee Valor Interstellar Workshop, um, there's a whole slew of technical papers that have been given on that over the last years, some by me, some by many other people. Um, and, uh, you know, progress is being made. Uh, the, 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 it's a lot of energy 
any way you slice it. It's a lot of energy, a lot of kinetic energy wrapped up in an object moving at 20 or 30 percent of the speed of light. Um, and so the name of the game is to harness natural sources to get as much of that energy into your spacecraft as possible because you didn't have to pay for it all. Um, and you know, there's been progress. It's all low technology already in this level, early conceptual design stuff, um, but it obeys the laws of physics. Um, and there are avenues of approach. And I would love to see some serious work going on on that because, you know, if you'd said, if you'd had me, if you asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have basically had to say, there's nothing to invest in. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no good ideas that really look promising that you'd be worth ready to develop. That's different now. You know, there, there, there are two or three or four or five parallel approaches that you could look at and say, each one of those has merit. Each one of those might be part of the final solution. You know, let's start working on all of them. So over the years, you know, growing up, seeing Star Trek and later Star Wars, of course, warp drive was just a, a button push away. They make it look so easy, of course, along with button push gravity and all that kind of thing. But uh, over that same period of time, we've seen more serious efforts. There's been people that looked at fusion drives, of course, which are still kind of elusive, very elusive. Uh, the Broussard drive, which vacuumed up, I guess, interstellar hydrogen and used that for for propulsive um, mass. And a lot of other things at this point, I'm wondering what you see as the most promising technology, because I've seen, you know, you said a brilliant thing years ago, which is it's all about energy. It sounds simple, but it's kind of an interesting explanation. You know, you've talked about beamed energy propulsion. I've seen you talk about other things that were more living off the land, if you will, on your way. What do you see as the most promising avenue? I, I, I would never just pick one. Because um, the, you know, when you're managing a technology, when you're trying to do a difficult thing, you you better have multiple parallel paths that look like they might get you there, because you never know which ones are going to wind up working out. Uh, so, um, all of the paths that you mentioned have have a role to play. You know, beamed energy has a role to play. Uh, that's a good way to shoot small things, and it might be a good way to send streams of pellets that you use later in the propulsion system for as part of your propulsion strategy. Um, so you send uh, them ahead of the spacecraft? Or behind, depending on how fast they're going. Yeah, um, there's a concept um, called the, the cog railway or the, the, the wind pellet shear sailing, where you run over the pellets and you, and you push on them as you go by to provide the reaction mass that pushes the spacecraft forward. Um, like like leapfrog almost yes oh wow um, there's uh, there's a concept that we just published at the last tviw conference um called um a dynamic soaring where you like a like a soaring bird you go out to the edge of the solar system and you turn back and forth in and out between the solar wind and the interstellar medium and you can pick up an increment of velocity like bouncing off the solar wind every time you do that and you can get up to about 2% of the speed of light that way without <laughs> spending any propellant. Um, the there's uh, fusion rockets are not out. They look very promising, uh, but they only get you about 5% of the speed of light. Um, you know, there's another concept that I was part of the development of called the, the wind drive or the Q drive or the plasma dyne jet, uh, where you, you basically run as you run through the interstellar medium, it's a wind. You extract the energy from that wind and you use it to expel reaction mass that you carried on board the vehicle. But that works better if the faster you're going when you start, the more you get out of that because the wind speed is higher. So it works better as a second stage where some of these other technologies work better as a first stage. So it's not, it's not like we're looking for the one magic one thing. We're, we're looking to build up an armamentarium of, of concepts that look credible that, that where if one of them didn't work, you wouldn't be dead in the water. You, your development program could continue with, with the other ones that look more promising at that time. This is like, like real sci-fi stuff <laughs> that you're talking about. That's crazy. So, it feels like. But, yeah. I don't know. That Pac-Man, that Pac-Man pellet pooping 
I like that one. That that, that sounds like fun. <laughs> so, you, you make it sound so sophisticated. Well, I mean, that's my job, right? Is to try yeah. to explain it to people.